I, this is what I do every morning before I start the day. I come out here and I work up my, my grasshopper. Have some parsley. Okay. Fucking unbelievable. You like parsley? No. Yeah. Parsley is very misunderstood. They use it as a garnish. Yeah. Did you eat a lot of parsley today? A little bit. <laughs> I had a bunch of that broccoli from the noodles. La 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 la. La 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 la. Thank you. Good produce. Give me a tour. Oh, so I didn't know we were starting. You didn't know it said action. Action, let's go. Alright, well. Let's do, actually let's do act, let's start from, from the front and then work our way in, okay? Okay. Right. This is where we receive produce every day. It comes in through our main loading dock, and we sort everything right over here. It's our receiving department. It's also the opposite side is the tail end, where all of our waste material goes out. Okay, hold on a second. Hold on. You don't like the ginger in the shot? No. Why? Because it's because it's yeah. Why? Oh, it's great. Right. Thank you. Well, the, here we are on the loading dock side where the produce comes in, and it's either it's either immediately refrigerated or it's sent right to production to be washed. Let's take a quick look inside and see what we got. This is a medium-sized refrigerator where the more delicate produce is left and then it's pushed around our facility as, we, as the day goes by. The good news is we're using our produce so quickly we don't need an epic amount of storage for produce. It goes really fast. It comes in really fast and it's used really fast. Point to that again. What are we doing here? Basically we're using a sanitization solution. This part of our uh, facility is a, uh, a, a lower risk part of the facility, but we still require uh, shoe sanitization throughout the day. The product that we use in very short demand would require some uh, slicing or, or shaving or some type of preparation. We have throughout the walk, we have throughout the washing area, um, areas where they could do uh, light washing and preparation. We'll show you them right now. James, you know, we're giving them a bad example here. We're basically conveying and not spraying. He's fixing the machine. All right. Oh, what's up, man? So this produce washing machine was designed by my team and I specifically for our needs for the wide range of produce that we're washing in it. Produce gets submerged in a deep tank over here and then it's pushed along through a current that's created by some jet forces that are going through here and it's picked up by a conveyor that's on an incline and it goes through about six different spray heads and at the end it's going through a fresh water bath. What do you, what's the 
basically saying is it needs stainless steel feet. And even those blocks that they're using there, they would be really good support to clamp around there. You could maybe mount it to the bottom of the machine with a... It's a just don't many, many, many tricks. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's move on to uh, where they prep a lot of the produce is prepped before it either goes into the salad production or juice production. Here we're separating the kale leaf from the stem. The kale that's used in salad, it's de-stemmed. The kale that we use in the juice, they leave the stem intact. This is the other side of that produce refrigerator. All right, so I'm going to take you. I'm going to take you to the other facilities that we have at Juice Press. What we've done in our facility is we've quarantined certain areas. Like our food production is separate from our juice production. We feel that that creates a little bit of a safety uh, paradigm for us. We don't necessarily have to go into all of that. But let's start from the beginning of where... Welcome to Fantasy Island. I like to call this a very big, small facility. What's happening up here is the, pro the washed fresh produce is being pressed on our, we have a, a variety of machines that range from the very small Norwalk presses, which is done on very low, very small amount of produce that we don't use a lot of, to the X1s, which is basically the same principle as a Norwalk, but actually a little bit better. Let's take a look. This machine is called the Juice Pro 2000 and it uses exactly the same method of pressing as the Norwalk cold press machine which is a smaller machine. Give me some power. Oh, when you're done. First, the produce has to be shredded down into a pulp and it all falls into a bag after it's shredded down. And then the second phase is to just use a large hydraulic press to squeeze the juice out of the encapsulation of the fibers. Here we go, there's the bag that catches the produce. And if you look down the chute over here, you'll see the blade. but at the very beginning of juice press, I was standing on top of these machines for many hours a day. I learned how to take them apart, put them back together. I used to make a lot of recommendations to the manufacturer about how they could make the machines more robust. And sometimes if I'm having some you know, personal problems, I like to come here late at night. Nothing's more relaxing than grinding down parent juice. If you look, we're about to, we're going to now press the kale. 
Put your camera in there. You have two things you're, you're shooting. You're shooting the juice coming out, but first you're shooting the pressure. This puts nine million pounds of pressure on the kale. That's a joke. I don't need that. Right. This is the most efficient way to extract juice from the encapsulation of the fiber. So effective, you get every essence and every drop of juice available from the produce. It's really a beautiful process. So this is uh, one of our citrus machines, our largest citrus machine that we use for doing lime, lemon, orange, and grapefruit. Pretty self, a pretty special machine in in so far as that it actually works because we've gone through so many different machines over the years, we finally found something that worked. Can you, uh, can you tell, me, tell me about some of this ink on your arms? Sure. Um, part of the uh, initiation process into my partner's hedge fund was they have to tattoo me in order to uh, show that I'm loyal to the firm. So, do any of these have particular meaning? Not really, you know, I just, I like to, I have a bad memory from all the years I got punched in the head, so I like to remember things that are important to me. My kid's name. Alright, so, before we show you bodily, I, I want to show you where we mix the juice. This is a secret chamber where no camera has ever gone before. We have three mixers that are actually unbelievable. They, they understand the formulations, they know what everything's supposed to taste like. This is one of our gurus of juice press mixing. everything in very small batch to do a good quality control testing. There's still a lot of companies that have made a big process out of small batch. And we've been able to still do that. So, our kitchen is now undergoing a changeover. In the next couple of months, we're gonna have some um, really, really nice equipment in here to uh, standardize how we're filling some of the product lines that we do a much larger volume in. However, that being said, about 45% of our products are going to be, continue to be hand filled one by one. Um, here we're filling one of our popular smoothies called the Sanctuary Blend. And it's in a single head piston filler. Here is something that we're doing a very short run, and we're keeping the product um, in, a, in, a, um, in a thermal container, and it's just easier on the staff to be able to not have to hold a pitcher in their hand and fill by hand, but it's still a very manual process. One of our popular green juices is called Green Plus Earth. It's also being filled on a single pitcher. Probably move over to the new filling machine when it comes in this part. It's moved over to the table. They wipe the bottle down, and it goes through a little bit of a conveyor where we have to stamp onto the machine the uh, quality control number and the uh, the use by date. The you know whatever. What's the what's the amount of time that it comes off the shelf? If it's not consumed. Well, 
The most fragile product that we have probably has a maximum of two-day shelf life. And then when you go into the, the products that um, are lower in pH, like a coffee, for example, they may have a shelf life of five days. What do you do with it when you don't use it? Well, what we do is we actually pull our juice early because we know our consumer's behavior a lot of times is to take your juice and pull them and maybe consume it the following day. So to ensure that the product's fresh, we pull the product a day earlier. And that product is either shared with our staff or it's picked up by a company called um, City Harvest and it's distributed through their network. Is that some sort of... Um Homeless shelter or food shelter? Well, or? I think that their their staff are more interested in our what would be considered a waste product. I don't know how much they're distributing it to the homeless people uh, by by volume. I wouldn't say that they're giving 60% of it to somebody that's homeless. I would say that first first and foremost is our waste by bottle is very very low because of how we've systemized what we produce. So there's not a ton of it to go around. And then by the time our staff are finished with taking what they want, there's not a, a, a huge volume of it. So I think the beautiful thing about uh, City Harvest is that both, a lot of their staff are volunteers. So the fact that they're getting the product for their consumption keeps them going the extra mile for their cause. being bagged to go to the smoothie bars throughout the city throughout the city. I don't need to, to, to be rough, but I would say holy S H I T. What an operation this is. <laughs> I mean where else are you gonna find this? Great room over here. This is where the Completed juices are stored before they're sorted out to go to the stores. So right now it's a time of the day where this refrigerator is very light because the product has already been sent out in the refrigerated trucks. Uh, if you come here at a different time of the day, this place is packed. You can't even move. Woo! I'm very excited. It's a new product that we're just launching. I think it's literally its first day on the shelf is today. Um, called Dirty Detox. It's a uh, lemonade type drink made with cayenne lemon. And we're putting a little bit of activated charcoal from coconuts in it. This is be great. This is gonna fly off the shelf. What if it doesn't what if it doesn't fly off the shelves? Then then what? If it doesn't fly off the shelves, well we have a we do an innovation meeting uh, monthly. Um, it's a group of people that um, range from the uh, marketing team to the chefs to the head of production. We sit down and we look at um, all the SKUs that we carry and we look at them. We rank them from best sellers, we rank them in category, percentage of sales, and we actually study something. And we try to go to the lowest sellers and we talk about why we're carrying that item. It may be simply because it makes us very unique and unusual or because the do-it-yourselfers who come to Juice Press are really excited that we have that in our lineup still. We make a decision if we're gonna cut that item and it's usually because we, we wanna make room in our production to add something. So we're trying to be very disciplined right now which is if we're coming out to add something, we wanna take something off the, off the menu. Yeah. Uh, hey Michael, how's it going? Um, I'm really excited about the new um, Dirty Detox. The one thing that I would complain about is um, the first run of how they're being adhered to the bottles. They're not really being adhered very well. There's a lot of bubbles in it. You'll see that. And I know that's going to get everybody freaked out. But I think it's really just uh, an adjustment that has to be made. These, bottle, these labels were not adhered well. So we have to just work that out. So <clears throat> that's in a, you know, one of very small, obviously, problems is today's the first day we're launching a product and um, it's a clear label and for some reason the application of these labels, they came out very bubbly. It doesn't look like, it looks like a, a bad tint job when you go to like a really cheap window tinting place. But that's just, 
a quick adjustment. facility also doubles as a retail store. The retail store main purpose is that because of how we're producing juice and we don't use a pasteurization process, we're required by FDA law to have a retail component. So we have a large retail component here in Long Island City and it's been great for the brand overall. This store is basically wiped out by the middle of the day. We're gonna enter into the food production side now. How you doing? Hi, How's it going? How you feeling? Thank you. Hi. Hi. How you doing? I'm not interested. Say Michael's definitely gonna call you nasty by the way. kettles which by household standard standards these look pretty large but by the volume of a uh, commercial operation they're actually really tiny here we're uh, we're finishing up the red lentil which is actually my favorite I wonder if I have I would have a stomachache if I eat all this in one day it's my favorite soup right here the red lentil show you some of the, the dehydration stuff that we're doing. How are you doing? Hi, how are you? These are our raw dehydrated falafel balls. Here's our kale chip. And our Cracko Del Jacko. I mean, it's just beautiful. Look, look at this. Look at those vibrant colors. Unbelievable. So I'm taking you now into the food kitchen where the, uh, the finished product actually lives. What you're seeing here is some of the raw ingredients before they're pieced together. What you'll notice is that our refrigerators work. They're extremely cool. Yeah. So I come into these kitchens and I talk to the food. I say, food, I love you. Make people feel good, make people feel great. Food is very sensitive to positive vibration. So, I mean, a lot of people say that's abstract science. I actually believe it's science. So we try to talk very nice to the food, make sure that the food is cold and feels happy in its surrounding. Um, I'm not really in the mood to eat anything savory right now, but I was gonna offer you a piece of raw chocolate. Because you said you had a bit of a sweet tooth. Oh yeah. This is not really what I consider sweet. It's actually, it's gonna complement your sweet tooth with a bitter tooth. And uh, I don't know, I think this should, this should shut down your cravings. It's not really sweet. A little bit. Coconut oil. Very good. A lot of things that fool you to think that it's sweet. Let's get the hell out of here. Let's go. Hurry and come to LA so I'm not tempted to buy naked juice anymore or any of those others. Well, you know, it's not the worst thing in the world if you're drinking naked juice over a soda. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that Naked and Adwala don't actually add sugar to their juice, so um, it's not the worst thing in the world. If, if they have ones that taste good, <clears throat> I think that's pretty cool. Um, I, I drink Adwala if I was in the middle of nowhere and could not get any juice of any kind, I wouldn't be ashamed to do that. If your diet consisted more of that, 
you start you start to crave you get closer and closer to the better and better product so here we're, we're back again at the uh, the front side of the loading dock where the produce comes in that's really it I feel like our work is done if I was gonna pose for the camera there would usually be someone next to me and I'd be pointing at them. Look what they did. Look what they ac well, accomplished. Point, point to your truck then. At least give me like a thumbnail that I can use. Oh, you want to pose? I'll give you a pose here. I, this is what I do every morning before I start the day. I come out here and I work up my, my grasshopper. Excuse me. 